Welcome back to Halloween Treats. I think we can all agree found footage horror movies as a whole are kind of played out right now. Oh sure, there's some undeniable classics out there that will stand the test of time, and some other genres have used it to pretty damn good effect. But we're at the point right now where I think the bad kind of outweighs the good, and that some people, too many people actually, might just be using the whole found footage thing as a creative crutch. Same goes for exorcism movies. There's one undoubtable golden class, and then there are a ton of others that are chasing that dragon to lesser and lesser returns each time. But with all that being said, in 2010, a little movie came along that actually managed to spark my interest in these two genres yet again. And that movie just so happens to be a little Eli Roth-produced film called The Last Exorcism. The movie follows Reverend Cotton Marcus, a man of the cloth who, after a major crisis of faith, decides to make a documentary exposing the truth about exorcisms. We learn a whole whole lot about Cotton throughout the course of the movie, and Patrick Fabian does a great job making you sympathize for a character who makes no bones about being a flim-flam man who plays off people's religious fears for money. You see, as we find out, he was really just kind of born into the role of a holy man in Exorcist. His father was one, and so was his grandfather before him. He only really started to question the whole thing after he had a kid of his very own. When Cotton is summoned by a farmer, Louis Sweetser, to perform one last exorcism on his daughter Nell, things quickly get out of hand, as it becomes apparent this girl has way more issues than anyone could ever have imagined. The last exorcism hits a lot of the same notes as the similarly set True Detective, saying how most exorcism stories you hear come from the same parts of the world. Very backwood, poorly educated, overly superstitious places. And a good chunk of the movie is just watching our protagonist, getting people to jump through hoops and fall for his many tricks. But this is, however, a horror movie after all, and one that's much less interested in jump scares or even gore, but one that excels in disturbing the audience with its twisted imagery and much more earthly horrors that you can only find in certain parts of the South. All of this is owed to the great performance given by Ashley Bell, who does all her own contorting and creepy movement work for the movie, but who also manages to be sweet and engaging in her own way. That way, you know, you sort of understand why Cotton and his crew want to go out of their way to save this girl from evil spirits or whatever else may be eating her. As I mentioned previously, the movie is done in the found footage documentary style, and all the actors do an amazing job coming off as real people, with believable pauses and responses. One of the best things I can say about The Last Exorcism is how it manages to sidestep almost every other found footage movie's problems. That is until the very end, where it indulges in all of them pretty much at once. And that is where you see the last exorcism totally craps the bed and falls apart in the last few minutes. Oh sure, it foreshadows its own twist pretty well, but it kind of undercuts everything the movie was doing previously. Now, I don't want to spoil it, but let me put it this way. You know how in every exorcism movie you have that one guy, that one non-believer who gets punished or proved wrong? Yeah, let's just kind of leave it at that, why don't we? Worse still, the movie actually got a sequel in 20. 13, which, I kid you not, was actually called The Last Exorcism 2. You know, Last Exorcism 2, we mean it this time. All that being said, The Last Exorcism is at least 95% a wildly fresh and interesting take on this type of horror movie, and I kind of wish we would see movies like this made more often. I would say check this one out, but you know, maybe, just maybe skip the last five minutes.